Well, a very happy Sunday to everyone. Uh, got this sent to me a couple of weeks back. A King Bowl N, K KBL M02. And according to King Bowl N's website and what's written on this box, it's called Solo Scan Specialized Professional Diagnostic to turn your smart device, i.e., iPhone or Android device, into a professional diagnostic tool. Turn your device into a professional technician's diagnostic tool. Now, listen, this one, as you can see, is locked only to BMW because that's all I really fix. But I dare say you can get one that covers every single model, I think, or just individual models. So I've not even opened it yet, actually. So let's open it and actually see if it's any good. So I've downloaded the app, which I will show you. And I'll put a link in the description, of course, for that. And that's it. As simple as that. So... Wow, it's got a little pouch. I'm, I'm fair impressed. Oh my God, how nice is that? Jesus. <laughs> how cool is that? A little zip purse. Wow, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Good stuff, King Ball, then, you know. Good stuff. First of all, I need to scan this to activate the device. The app won't work. It's a quick start manual. It's in quite a few languages, mainly English. Russian. And some other languages, basically. Actually, it's in Russian and English for some reason only. Okay. Well, whatever. So, let's open this up. Well, first of all, in my opinion, it's very well packaged. And I must say, compared to sort of Carly and all the other crap what's out there and cheap stuff, it's, uh, well, it's pretty good. Three lights there, it looks like. Three status lights. Bluetooth connection power and some error lamp. The triangle's not quite straight. It's a bit iffy, isn't it? But whatever. But the main thing is, we're going to plug it into my BMW i3 electric car, because that's the only BMW we've got to try it on. And if it works, I'll recommend it. If it don't work, well, this video might never see it light today, and I'll just send it back to them. Anyway, should we go and check it out? And see how it performs. Hopefully it'll perform just so. Let's go and check it out. Right, so I'm in the i3 now. And uh, I've plugged the old dongle in. And what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go through the functions. And we're going to probably, probably go on a split screen, maybe. I've not decided yet when I actually edit the video what I'll do. I'll probably go, through, go on a split screen. And I'll go through what I'm doing and some useful functions. Well, first thing you need to do when you download this um, this actual app, eDiag, is you need to actually download the software package for the particular brand that you're working on. Now, of course, they've sent me one from BMW. As you can see, it's got uh, HC BMW, which is the Chinese version. So that's good as well, isn't it? But it's not going to apply to us, but it has normal BMW Rolls-Royce Mini. So it's kind of good. So I guess you could do Rolls-Royce as well, though. Having said that, I don't think you'd be working on a modern Rolls-Royce with a, you know, less than 70-year-old dongle and an iPhone application, but you know, you never know. You never know, dear. Anyway, what we're gonna do is now, I'm gonna go through this very fast. Now, this video I've decided, I'm not gonna put music on it because it annoys people. And I don't wanna be chunnering on for ages, but I decided not to speed up the video in certain sections. I did speed up that uh, loading bit there. I decided not to speed it up, even though it might be a bit boring, because I wanted to show you that, uh, the real time aspect of how long it takes to load. Because actually, it's pretty goddamn fast. I was very impressed, mainly, with just how fast it loads. Because, you know, if you ever use them other cheap ones, them like Elm 327 piles of crap, they never usually work. They have, like, bad connection issues. The connection drops, and they're just a waste of space. Complete waste of time. Carly's the same. I've used the, the older version of Carly. New one I can't comment on, but the old one, I just chucked it in the bin. It was a pile of rubbish. But this one here is very, very fast, and it's pretty much like uh, launch products, and I've never used any King Ball then, but I've used no launch tools, a lot of them, and it loads very, very much like a normal handheld scan tool. So really, for less than 70 euro, it, really, you are getting a, a proper scan tool. It, there's no difference. It's just as powerful. The live data, as you'll see, coming up is absolutely fantastic. It's very accurate, very responsive, and, you know, I've got, I can't fault it. The only thing I can fault... But then again, for like, you know, less than 70 euro, what do you want? They don't, I don't, they couldn't find any calling options to do anything. But there is options to look at live data. There is options to reset things like um, certain things, you know, I would imagine. And like, you can initialize flex rate. You can do all sorts of stuff like that. So 
As a professional tool, well, I don't know I'd use it. I wouldn't use it professionally. I wouldn't sort of use it for that. It's more for DIY stuff, isn't it? So if the engine light comes on, on your car, bearing in mind, I've got an electric car, but you can do, you know, petrols and diesels with this, no problem. If the, if the light comes on, you've got this little tool in your, and you can just keep it in your glove box. It's tiny, isn't it? Just stick it in and you can see what the fault code is. Now, let's say you've got an ABS sensor fault which I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a test in here showing you how it can pick up the speed and direction of rotation with the active speed sensors on my i3. You'll see that shortly. What if you've got your own car, you've got an ABS fault? Well, first of all, it's easier than just to swap a sensor usually if it's not stuck in side to side. You can do the job yourself at home. You don't have to go and pay 100 quid an hour at some garage for someone to spend an hour diagnosing it, charge you for that, and then charge you for fitting. You save yourself a few hundred quid, and for the price, you'd be daft not to buy it, really. So make sure you follow the link in the description, because if you do that, you'll you'll get it, and you know your life's going to be easier. You don't need to stress anymore about uh, reading fault codes with these dodgy readers. This is a very good tool. I'm loving it so far. Fantastic. So on the i3, we've read the fault codes. We've only got one fault code in the body domain controller, and that's uh, <laughs> the reason for that is I've just had a windscreen fitted. It's a big saga I'll not go into, but obviously they haven't coded the the light and rain sensor module, which is the replace on the windscreen. They've obviously replaced it, and they don't, they've don't. they obviously not done anything with that. And you'll find that it's got something called a missing lens slave, and it's usually because they haven't bothered coding it. Anyway, let's look at some other stuff. Terminal 30 voltage, just graphing form if you need it. I don't think you would need that, although it did come in handy once, if you remember the X3 I had, where I had to look at the voltage on the BDC in graph form. I found an issue with a uh, bad ground, so it did come in handy, so you could do the same. Why not? Charging information. Charge, Jesus, 136,692 uh, minutes, was it? Charging time. That's a lot, isn't it? My God, I've charged it. Oh, battery's still bang on. So you can look at all sorts of stuff. You can look at module information. Don't really give you any help, like, usually. But if you need to replace a module, you can find out some information about when it was replaced. What you can do as well with module information, like with this scan tool and any other scan tool, you can see if someone's changed it after the, the car was made, you know. We, WLAN switched off. I don't know if that's... Uh, I think it's switched off because I have to subscribe to that. So that's why that's switched off. But what's good is you can look at stuff like um, field strength. You can look at the field strength uh, of, and the frequency. Field strength 5. That's handy. Sometimes we have customers complaining, or you might complain that your radio station reception is crap. Well, you can look at the field strength there, so it's very useful. Some other stuff there, CID screen, showing the brightness. Again, troubleshooting, this is kind of invaluable. Audio volume, if you've got an issue, let's say the audio knob doesn't work on the radio. Well, on my car, as you can see, I'm turning it up from the knob and it's working. But what if it didn't go up? Well, you know, you've probably got an issue with the radio head unit itself. Again, it's another diagnostic sort of tool you can use. This is the sort of thing I'd be looking at if I was fault-finding at work, you know, and I, I was looking for live data to help me because there was no specific fault codes. Let's look at some other stuff now. Chassis ABS system. This is really interesting, actually. So one of the things I do at work when I'm diagnosing ABS systems is I'll look at the speed signals from each wheel. If I don't get one, I know I've probably got an issue. Brake pad sensors are okay. See, modern brake sensors, uh, brake pad sensors, they don't work like the old ones. They're a little bit different. They just basically only come on when the actual pad breaks. They don't give you a CBS um, sort of prognosis of when or what condition the pads are in. So just remember that. So let's look at the wheel speed sensors on my i3. This is a nice, quick and dirty test. Uh, it's a really good test, actually. So if you know that uh, you've got a kilometre reading on your wheels and you can see a reverse and a forward direction on the active speed sensors, in essence, you know that you've not got an issue with any of them, haven't you? And this, actually, if you've got a knackered sensor, I can promise you it won't detect anything. It'll be definitely, uh, it'll be an error or a, 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 it'll not be the same as the other, other values. So you might get a zero kilometre per hour reading or one that isn't as fast as the others, especially if there's no wheel slip. So, yeah, this is a really, really good diagnostic tool, just like um, the launch, what I have as well. So, yeah, that's 10 out of 10 in my eyes for that, for the DSC side of things. So now we can go into the SME, battery management electronics. That's uh, the thing that controls the voltage, the cells, the high voltage cells in the high voltage battery. So, again, this is extremely useful. We can look at the switch contactors. They should have 12 volts on to keep them uh, essentially in place. When we take the voltage away, of course, there is no 
connection so they spring open and therefore we reduce the voltage for safety reasons in an accident or if we're doing service work we can see all that you can see the battery voltage 375 volts and state of charge actually interesting to see state of charge there is a little bit different than the the real state of charge by about five percent and i guess it does that for a reason so that you don't run out essentially i guess i don't know but again little dongle less than 70 quid and we can look at high voltage battery uh, states and to me that's a win-win absolute win-win especially for me and i'll use this on my own car regularly it's brilliant it's much faster than the launch with the cable and messing about and i hope you're getting an idea with this video just how fast this is which is why i'm kind of not speeding it up or i don't need to have sound effects it's proper fast actually it really is battery voltage low voltage side 13.8 was running a bit low actually that wasn't it should be over 14 volts that perhaps it was uh, switched off who knows let's look at some other stuff now some other information again does it can read everything on my card I've, I've, there's nothing it uh, it didn't scan it scanned everything basically that i wanted it to scan that's all the units fitted to my car let's look at the gateway module zgm central gateway module let's see about that shall we no fault code they raise that one with the light sensor what they didn't bother doing at the windscreen place that's gone but there's all sorts of cool stuff we can do i don't know if you noticed too that we can reset short circuits in the in the um sort of the body module if you like the body domain controller we can do that as well yeah all sorts of data on this dongle absolutely well worth the money I recommend it absolutely 10 out of 10. Love it. What are we in now? Let's see. Let's, do you see how fast it is? It just absolutely flies. It absolutely flies. And bearing in mind, my iPhone is completely full. I think I had about 2 gig left of, mem of memory. But yeah, it's still flying. I dare say if you've got a better phone than me, this will be even faster on your phone. So this is on an iPhone 64 gig, nearly 4 year old, iPhone 11 with like a full memory pretty much so that gives you an idea of just how good the app is i had no problems at all scanning the qr code uh, registered it immediately just in case of downloading the software for the first time don't forget you can get updates um on this device as well and um whenever you want really it'll just it'll just you just be able to update it from the from the your application essentially so yeah it's a real game changer isn't it so that's some more data there, what we can see. That's the accelerator pedal, pressing it in the car, as you can see. So you can basically diagnose that as well. So that's good, isn't it? When you can see things like electric fan activation signals, you've got an issue with the limbo, so you've got an issue with the fan final stage unit inside the evaluation electronics, all that type of stuff. If it, you know, if you can see a signal, so if you could activate that, couldn't you? You don't want to wait for the engine to warm up. And with the fan activation, you can then scope the limbo and see if you've got a signal coming from... Um, I guess from the body domain controller on this car. <clears throat> so basically, or the engine ECU, EDME, whatever. So it's really useful for that, and it's basically just like the big scan tools. There's no difference, really. For the price, you'd be daft not to buy it. Here's the gear stick GWS. You know, on the i3, we have that really weird-looking one, what's like on top of the steering column. So we can see if we've got an issue with that, we can actually see the inputs then to the control units. So we can see what we're doing. We'll push it forward, press neutral, press reverse, press park, whatever. If you've got an issue with that, we can diagnose it, can't we? We just this little cheap dongle. So it's fantastic. Brilliant. Well, I'll summarise it dead quick, because I've already gone through it. All it does is it reads fault codes, does this dongle. But it also provides very powerful, amazing live data and actuation tests. For example, the cooling fan, initialised flex ray, um, show a lot of data, like the gear stick selector, which position it's pressed in, you can test components that way, and you'll see that when I, when I play the video back. And it also, you can check the active speed sensor, so I reversed the car, I drove it forward, it can tell forward and reverse, it can show individual speeds. So it was a diagnostic tool. Okay, it can't do, for example, what the launch can do, what that little cheap launch, 200 euro launch I, I, I've got as well. But that's okay, because this is absolutely mega cheap, this dongle, I mean, it's less than 100 quid. So, you know, to be honest with you, if you're going to like get a Carly or Bimmer scan, I won't bother, I'd buy this. So it's basically just the same as um, a King Ball or a launch scanner, really, I guess, if you, if you like, I would say. Without any of the fancy stuff such as you can't do any coding, but for like just reading fault codes, actuating cooling fans, actuating lights, stuff like that, it's brilliant. I give it a, definitely a 9 out of 10. 
uh, connected first time with Bluetooth, had no connection issues. And what's more, it's dead fast. Yep, yeah, recommended. Fantastic. You can carry it in a little wallet and keep it in your car. Bloody brilliant. Love it.